healing, salvation, and happiness. It's your season. It's your time. God has plans for your life to prosper you and to give you hope and a future. Join us and learn how God's love and power can bring hope and happiness to your life. This is your opportunity for motivation, encouragement, and purpose. Welcome, church family. I'm Renee Johnson with the Daily Gospel Network where we bring you the Lord's Word every day from some of the country's most inspiring churches and pastors. And today is no different. Let's check out one of the newest members of the Daily Gospel Network. Hey, God bless you everyone and thank you for tuning in to the One Touch Ministries right here on the Daily Gospel Network. Ooh. We are so excited that you have tuned in today. And today is Friday afternoon. It is a good, good Friday. Child, it's a real good Friday. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> and we are so excited that you're here. I'm Pastor Shen. This prophet is an idea. Go ahead, tell them. Tell them who I am? Okay. Yes. Well, once again, my name is Prophetess Naditra Young, and I am so excited to be in your homes today because it is a fantastic Friday. Yes, it I'm is. I'm telling you. <laughs> it is fantastic. And listen, we are approaching our October 30th Stop the uh, Curse Conference yes. that's happening at the First Baptist Church of Riverside, New Jersey. And I'm telling you, you do not want to miss this fantastic event. Yes. And we're going to have people there. We're going to have some musicians. We're going to have some praise and some worship. Mm -hmm. And the word is going to come forth on that evening. And I'm so excited. I'm excited too because let me tell you something. We have so much going on in the month of October. We all know what this month represents to some people in the world. But listen, there's so many other curses that we all carry in some type of way and God just gave us this service mm -hmm. for the 30th of October so that we can just give God praise and kind of actually just break all the curses off of our lives break all the things that we carry as individuals as women in God and men of God so you know I'm just so, so super, super excited, excited about October 30th yes it's gonna be <laughs> so good yes. and then we also have our mighty men of valor men's conference armed and dangerous coming up and that's going to be a virtual conference uh, it's going to be on november the 13th and 14th and make sure you tune in to that that's going to be on our facebook live so make sure you uh, watch us on facebook as well as on our youtube channel and anything else you want to say before we Nope. Going to today's message? Nope, I'm just excited because Pastor Shannon will be giving a dynamic, powerful word. So make sure you stay tuned and just stay connected to One Touch Ministry right here on the Daily Gospel. Yes, yeah, so listen to this really quick and then we'll be right back. Amen. We want to share with you, yeah, and your family, family. the love of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. So tune in, tune in. Grow together to increase our faith with God with one touch ministries. We're touching hearts and changing lives with one touch ministries. We're here for you right now. Welcome everyone and thank you so much for tuning in to the Daily Gospel Network. I am Pastor Shannon. And listen, I'm so excited for um, the word on today. And today I have my wife and my beautiful daughter that's going to be here with me um, right here. And I want to say the studio, but the studio is our house <laughs> right here in our home. This is actually where we do ministry at, and it is so wonderful, and we are so blessed. We thank you so much for our members, to our partners, and our friends who are actually a right a part of our ministry. And they are here. They encourage us every single week uh, right here on the Daily Gospel Network. So listen, <clears throat> if you have your Bibles, um, you're going to go to the, the book of John chapter 5, and, we're, and so... With our Bible study, we have been journeying through John. And we stopped this past week in John chapter 5. And a few things that I noticed and I picked up 
on this past week and I said hmm I said I think I want to speak a little bit about that um, this upcoming uh, week uh, for the Daily Gospel Network so John chapter 5 and we're gonna start at verse 16 <clears throat> Now, I'm going to be reading from the New Living Translation of the Bible. And it says, So the Jewish leaders began harassing Jesus for breaking the Sabbath rules. But Jesus replied, My father is always working, and so am I. And so the, Jew the Jewish leaders tried uh, all the harder to find a way to kill him for he not only broke the Sabbath he called God his father thereby making himself equal with God and Jesus explained I tell you the truth the son can only uh, the son can do nothing by himself he does only what he sees the father doing Rather, the father does, uh, the son also does. And so I want to just take my thought from this one passage of scripture, which is verse 17. And it says, but Jesus replied, my father is always working. Yes. And so am I. And so I just want to pose a question for you today. What you're working with? Hallelujah. <laughs> what you're working with? Because I was just looking through the scriptures here. And the Bible was just saying here that my father is always working. And we're right now in a generation of people. We're in a generation of believers. And we're in a generation of preachers who feel like that they are... Uh, they are owed something to them. They feel like that, um, that that stuff is supposed to be given to them. Now they'll try to be humble and say, you know, well, you know, I don't really want to take anything from anybody or anything like that. But you turn around and see that they'll go on Facebook and they'll preach and ask people uh, 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 to send them money through Cash App, to send them money through PayPal to send them money through other means that <clears throat> to me it's looking like okay in order for you to release a word from God why do I have to send you money mm -hmm. to release a word from God the word of God is free for all on, now if somebody decides to bless you and then hey if you if you decide to bless the ministry that is fine Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. And so then uh, I just had to pose the question like, wow, wh what are people doing in the kingdom of God? And so uh, as I began to just look through a few scriptures from the English Standard Version of the Bible, the book of Acts chapter 20 verse 35 says, In all things I have shown you that by working hard yes. in this way we must help the weak mm -hmm. uh, and remember the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. How he himself said it is more blessed to give then to receive yes, sir. Colossians 3 23 says whatever you do work heartedly as the Lord and not for man mm -hmm. first Timothy 5 and 8 says but if anyone does not prove uh, provide for his relatives uh -huh. or his family the King James Version Bible says and especially members of his household he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. The King wow. James Version of the Bible says, you're worse than an infidel. Mm -hmm. That means that you're not providing for your family if you're not working. So what are you working with? My God. What are you working with? 1 Corinthians 15 58 says, Therefore, my brothers, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. It's all right to work for the Lord. It's all right to do ministry. It's all right to go forth in the things of God. But I'm here to tell you, 
man of God, I'm here to tell you, woman of God, that you have to do these works for the Lord, but you have to work for yourself. Yes, come on now. You have to find a whole nother way to do things for yourself. You can't be lazy. You can't be lackadaisical. You can't be just this person who um, think that stuff's supposed to just come to you by osmosis. I remember when I was younger, uh, I was telling uh, a young man one day, uh, I said, you know, yes, God will bless you. And God will keep you and he will increase you. But God, although he can do it, but I don't think that he's going to do it. He's going to make money just rain down from heaven. And boom, whoop, there it is. Mm -hmm. It's not going to happen that way. Although God can do it, but a sack of money just ain't going to fall out of the sky. You're not going to go, you're not going to, go to the ATM machine. And just uh, uh, money's just going to come out of the ATM machine. Guess what? That's stealing. Mm -hmm. You better report that money back. You bet, uh, unless they say, "Hey, here's some reward money for being honest," and you know, uh, because the machine was broken. I don't know how you got extra money and all this other kind of stuff. Yes. The Bible says here, Proverbs sixteen and three: Commit your work to the Lord, and your plans will be established. Everything that you that you're planning in your life, commit it to the Lord. Work unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. Dedicate his work. And dedicate your work to him. And and again, going back to John uh, 5 and 17. But Jesus answered, my father is working until now. And I am working. Even right now, God is working on your behalf. You may not see it. Mm -hmm. But God is working on on your behalf so let me go back to my scriptural text here and let me just tell you what happened so and I'm gonna start at verse 1 afterwards Jesus returned to Jerusalem and um, from one of the Jewish holidays inside the city near the sheep gate was the pool of Bethesda with five uh, covered porches crowds of sick people the blind lame or paralyzed laid on the porches mm -hmm. one of the men there had been sick for look how many years he was sick for 38 years and so if you don't know this story here this is the story where every year the 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 angel of the lord will come stir up the pool and then, so the person who reaches the pool, they will be the first one, um, if they reach the pool, then they will be healed from whatever sickness or disease or malady or malfunction, uh, disorder that they may have. And so you have, a blind, uh, you, have, you have a man here that the Bible says that was on the porch for 30 years. Eight years. That's a long time just sitting there. Now, I'm just imagining myself, you know, I'm uh, 43 right now. So that means 90% of my life, <laughs> I'm sitting at the porch looking at knowing that I want to be healed. Come on. I believe I could be healed. Come on. But for whatever reason, I have not been healed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When Jesus saw him, he knew he had been ill for a long time and asked him, Would you like to get well? Jesus. So, my question unto you today is Do you want to be well? Come on now. Do you want to be healed? Do you want to be set free? Do you want to be delivered? Do you want God to do something so supernatural in your life that you can say only God yes. can do it? Come on. You may feel like the person who has been sitting around this porch for the past 38 years and seemed like the, I can't get free. 
I can't get delivered. Nothing in my life that is going on right now is happening to me. Every time I take two steps forward, yes, I'm getting knocked back three steps. My God. But I'm here to encourage you today, my brother and my sister, yes. that God is about to propel you into your future. Come on now. And so, you know, so I myself, I have a saying that I say, listen, the worst is over. I actually stole it from Bishop Trotter, but it's all right. No. The worst is over and the best is yet to come for what's coming for you is way better come on now. than what's been. Yes. Sometimes we have to get excited about our future and forget about the things that's happened behind us and press toward the mark and the things that happened in front of us. But my wife, she likes to say, hey, listen, I'm excited about my future, but I'm also excited about my next. You better preach. Because the next step that I'm getting ready to step into, God is going to propel me into my future. The next move that I'm going to make, I'm going to be moving into my future. The next yeah. thing that I step into, the enemy may have caused a stumbling block to happen, but I'm going to leap Come over on. that stumbling block Whoop. in Come the name now. of Jesus. Because God has shown me that I am going to... Uh-huh. My next. Yes, sir. I don't know what your next is, my brother. I don't know what your next is, my sister. But I'm here to tell you that not only are you going to jump over that stumbling block, but you're going to use the stumbling block as a stepping stone. You better come on now. <laughs> Ooh, I feel like shouting already. So it says here, Jesus asked the question, would you like to get well? Uh -huh. Would you like to get healed? Mm -hmm. And the man answered, he said, I can't, sir. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I just want to pause right there just for a brief moment. I can't, sir. Jesus. The Bible says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. So this just allowed me to know that this man was lacking in faith because there was no substance because he said, I can't. Uh -huh. Let me just read something to you really quick. A couple of quotes that I pulled. It says, uh, because let me, okay, let me say the scripture first. The Bible says that death and life Come is on. in the power of of your tongue. Yes, sir. This man right here just spoke, I can't. Uh huh. If he knew the scriptures, he knew the scrolls. Well, I guess maybe at the time that the scripture wasn't really out where it says, I can do all things through Christ that strengthened me because that was after, that's when Paul, he wrote that. Uh huh. Uh -huh. But he just said, I can't. I can't, sir. So the, 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 uh, the saying here, uh, let me just read just a few quotes here. It says, the power of can't. The word can't. The word can't makes strong people weak. My God. Blind people who can see saddens happy people. My God. My turns God. brave people into cowards. Jesus. Robs a genius of his brilliance. Mm -hmm. Causes rich people to think poorly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And limits the achievements of that great person living on the inside of us. Jesus. That's what the word can't does. It says here, turn your can'ts into cans and your dreams into plans. You better come on now. I like that. I'm here to encourage you, my brother and my sister, that you got to cut that apostrophe T into I can. Uh-huh. I love the, the, uh, the, the little engine that could. Was it a little engine that could? I think I can. I think I can. 
think I can, I 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 think I know I can. Yes. I know I can accomplish my dreams. I know I can accomplish my goals. I know I can accomplish my visions. Yes. I know, I know, I know I can, I can, I can, I can, I can. Yes, you better come on faster. Turn your can'ts into can and your dreams into plans. Woo, I like that. He said, I can't, sir, said the sick man, for... I have no one to put me into the pool when the water bubbles up. Someone else gets ahead of me. So I'm thinking of the mindset of this guy who saying, I can't. Mm -hmm. So apparently this man has some type of disability. So I'm just going to just imagine because since the Bible doesn't say what kind of disability he has, I'm just going to imagine that he couldn't walk. Maybe his legs, uh, he wasn't able to walk to the pool. But I'm thinking to myself and I'm, I'm thinking, maybe I'm thinking like Jesus, like, okay, so you've been sitting here for 38 years. I, I, I think you might be just a little lazy. <laughs> Because in my mind, how I'm picturing this story, I'm picturing this story that uh, if you sit in, so, so year number one, I guess to the pool. All right, I'm probably missed it because I don't know when the angel is going to come and trouble the pool. Right. So Okay, so maybe I missed it. By year number two, I, I probably ain't picked up the time frame yet. So, yeah, so year two, I ain't picked up the time frame yet. So, you know, I don't know when the angel go come trouble the water. Uh, 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 I can see it happening. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe I can't get, but. All right, so year two go by. Year three go come by. I'm going to pick up a pattern now. Okay, so right around the fall, summertime, it's starting to get just a little bit more chillier than normal. I noticed that the, the water started bubbling up just a little bit. Okay, so, all right, man, so maybe by year three, he ain't got it. Uh -huh. By year four, come on. I'm going to notice something. Oh, the, the leaves is starting to fall. Uh -huh. <laughs> Let me start inching my way. Uh -huh. <laughs> because apparently my, my arms and stuff must work. Because the Bible says here, he said nobody will pick me up and carry me to the pool. So I'm just imagining his legs must don't work. Uh -huh. But I don't say nothing about his arms. Uh -huh. I've on. been a crypto crab up to the Come pool. On. Come on. By year four, okay, somebody probably would have got in the pool before me because I probably just a little bit slow. Uh -huh. But by year five, Come on. oh, I'm getting in the water. Come on. Come on. Because I want my healing. That's it. I want my deliverance. I want my breakthrough. See, a lot of times, <clears throat> breakthrough don't come. Healing and deliverance, a lot of times, don't come instantaneously. Mm -hmm. A come lot on. of times, you have to work them. Thank you got to work that healing. You got to work that breakthrough. You got to work that miracle that uh -huh. God has for you. All right, well, for me, for sure, by year five, uh -huh. I'd have got my breakthrough. Yes. I'd have got my healing. Come on that, now. Listen, I would have got it. Wouldn't nothing stop me. Wouldn't nothing held me back. I'd have grabbed some folks by their ankles. But ah, get, get out. This is my turn. Yeah, yeah, come on. 38 years. This man sat there uh -huh. on a poach. <laughs> Excuse my Midwestern dialect. I said the poach. Not the porch. The poach. <laughs> and watched everybody else get healed, set free, and delivered. What are you working with? Yeah. What is your faith? Where is your faith, men of God? Where is your faith, woman of God? Yes. So let me tell you what Jesus said. This is what Jesus said. Yes, sir. And I'm closing with this right here. Jesus said this.
because what y'all need to do in order to make sure that you complete the work that God has for you to do. Yeah. This is what you got to do. Uh-huh. Jesus, in point number one, write this down. He said, stand up. Come on. Some of y'all sitting mm -hmm. on uh -huh. your porch a disaster. Ah, you better preach, Pastor. Some of y'all sitting in the worst predicament. Mm -hmm. This woman one day, she said to me one day, she said, people a lot of times, it, it don't hurt enough. It, don't, it, it doesn't hurt that bad. She said, she gave an example. She said, there was a dog that every day went in, in, on, on the porch and he sat on a nail on the porch. Mm -hmm. And they said, how come that dog keeps sitting on oh, that yeah. nail on. on the porch? Uh -huh. And she said, because it don't hurt, hurt enough. enough. Come on. There's some things in your life, it just don't, don't hurt, hurt enough. enough. You keep going back to it. It don't hurt enough. Yeah. Your healing, your breakthrough, your deliverance, the things that God wants you to do in your life, apparently you're still in the situation because it don't hurt enough. And so Jesus is telling you today, my brother and my sister, Come on. get up, man of God. Get up, woman of God. Listen, it might hurt. Your knees might pop. And things may not feel uh -huh. the way that you want them to feel. Uh -huh, uh -huh. But step number one for you to work with God and work the thing that God wants you to do. You got to first get up. Stop being lazy. <laughs> Stop being spiteful. Ooh, Stop being angry. You, you got to stop it right now in the name of Jesus. He said, get up. Uh -huh. He said, what's the next thing you do? Listen, he said, pick it up. Uh -huh. You got to pick. I wish I had some stuff to pick up. I ain't going to go touch that stuff over there. I, already know. I just touched this right here. He said, pick, pick, pick it up. Y'all excuse my games here. But <laughs> pick, pick up your joy. Uh -huh. Pick, pick, pick. Pick up your love. Uh -huh. come on, come the, the, the people who have hurt you. The people who mistreated you. Yeah. But you, God said you still got to love them. Uh -huh. You got to pick up the broken pieces of your Ooh, life. You got to pick up God. stuff that, right. all right, I know this stuff God. ain't going my way. Uh -huh. But I'm going to pick it up and I'm going to carry it on, on, on into my next place. And what Jesus said, this is your last step right here. After you pick up your love, after you pick up your joy, after you pick up your peace, now God says you got to walk. You got to walk into your destiny. You got to walk into your plans that God has for you. You got to walk out your dreams. You got to walk out your you destiny. You got to walk it out. Walk it out. You may stumble a little bit. <laughs> But you still got to walk it out. It may be some stumbling blocks. But God said that he's going to use those stumbling blocks for stepping stones. And you're going to step into your destiny. You're going to step into the things that God has for you. You're going to step into it. Preach. God said it is time for you to stand up. Yes. Put on the whole armor of God that you can withstand the wiles of the devil. There are some things that the enemy has thrown fiery darts at you yeah. and he said, I need you to have on the best plate of righteousness so you can stay. For more information on today's Spotlight Church, Visit them on the internet and follow them on social media. I'm Renee Johnson with the Daily Gospel Network. And until next time, remember, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us.